Trophies are one of my favorite lake technique and cichlids. They're really fun active fish and come in a wide variety of different colors. I've kept three different groups of trophies in my fish room over the last couple of years, so I figured that it's time now to talk about how to take care of and breed these wonderful cichlids. Like I mentioned in the open, trophies come from Lake Tanganyika in Africa. In the wild, you can find these fish actively moving around the rock work throughout the lake, picking out the algae that grows on the rocks, similar in function to what you'd see saltwater tanks do in the ocean. There's a wide variety of different species and location variants that you can find throughout the lake, coming in a wide variety of different colors, all of them being beautiful. These fish will reach a length of about five to six inches, and I would recommend keeping them in a minimum of a 75 gallon tank. I would recommend a tank setup that mimics their natural environment with a sandy substrate with rocks that the fish can pick algae off of. I currently have two groups of trophies in my fish room, my trophies Mpulungu, that are living in a 75 gallon tank, and my Trophius Melorio Red Mori, which I have living in a 125 gallon tank. In setting up your new Trophius tank, I would highly recommend starting out with a group of six or more. These fish are African cichlids and can get fairly aggressive, so the more that you can keep together, the merrier. Other than dealing with aggression, I've found that Trophius are reasonably hardy to keep. As long as you provide them with adequate filtration, keep your tank at typical tropical temperatures, and provide them with hard water. I keep mine currently at a pH range that ranges from 7.8 to 8.0, and they seem to be doing just fine. If you have soft water, I would highly recommend you buffer your tank with crushed coral. You will need to pay attention to the amount that you are feeding your trophies since they are susceptible to bloating. Given that they are algae eaters in the wild, I would highly recommend that you add spirulina flake and other vegetable matter to their diet. In terms of my feeding regimen, I feed my fish mostly extreme big fella pellets and mix it up with some spirulina flakes. With using this feeding regimen, I've really not found any issues with bloating that trophies are notorious for, but I would definitely avoid higher protein foods. In terms of tank mates, I would highly recommend that you keep trophies in a species only tank. I personally really like the look of a large school of trophies in a large tank. To keep the strains pure, you'll need to keep trophies from different locations in separate tanks. If you're insistent on keeping trophies with other fish, you could try them with fish like Cyprochromus or maybe some shell dwellers. But I would attempt this only in a tank that's six feet or longer. In the past, I have briefly kept some trophies with shell dwellers, but be advised that you may not see many fry from either fish. Trophies are voracious eaters, so I would avoid keeping this fish with slower moving and slower feeding fish, since the slower fish will be out competed for food and suffer. I would also avoid the carnivorous fish for obvious reasons. Others have said that trophies can't be kept with plants, but I found that my trophies have done fine with Phallocinaria. So now that we've learned about how to take care of trophies, let's talk about where to find them and how much you'd expect to pay for them. You'll have trouble finding these fish in your big box chain store. However, depending on your local fish store, you may have better luck. If there's one available in your local area, I would seek out a fish store that specializes in African cichlids. You also may want to seek out your local fish clubs, and even better yet, if you can find a local cichlid club in your area, if one's available. One thing about these fish is that they're not going to be cheap. In the retail market, I would expect to pay anywhere from $25 to $30 per fish, with it being less expensive to possibly purchase these fish at a local fish club or local fish club auction. While breeding trophies is fairly simple, i found that sexing the fish is not. I personally cannot tell the sex of the fish by just looking at them. You could vent the fish if you're experienced, but I would recommend getting six or more fish so that you have a very high probability of getting one male and one female. The recommended ratio is one male to every four to five females. Like the majority of African cichlids, trophies are maternal mouth brooders with the females holding about five to 15 eggs for about three weeks before releasing the fry. I do not pull the eggs from the females but I do let the fry grow out with their parents. I've not found the parents to be excessive fry eaters and are quite easy to feed. I normally will just feed either the spirulina flakes or the extreme pellets and let the fry pick up the food. This has seemed to work quite well. One thing you will notice is that the fry do have a different color, being like a blue-black color with spangling on the fish. And as they grow older, they'll turn into their adult form. I really find breeding trophies to actually be quite fun 
and quite enjoyable. I hope that you enjoyed looking at one of my favorite Lake Tanganyika cichlids. Even though Trophius can be intimidating to beginners, I feel that as long as you follow the tips outlined in this video, that these fish are a lot of fun with their beautiful colors and high activity level. So with that, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.